where we gear up and fill a cart full of tools and go out into the nature trail behind the museum and do battle with invasive privet and barberry and burning bush and uh, Japanese knotweed and uh, other things. And every day that we've done that, we walk past uh, 25 invasive plants, a mature, <laughs> very large uh, invasive plants at the museum. So when we were able to uh, get a grant from South County Garden Club, uh, a very generous grant, I might add, um, we proposed that we replace those um, invasive plants with some native plants. And then it morphed into, there's two spaces near the trailer that are long neglected gardens. And we're going to rehab those gardens and buy the plants and materials we need with the grant. So that's what is the genesis of this project. And um, what you see there, oh, so then moving on. So uh, what I just said, but um, that's the plan. Farewell to the, farewell to the bad guys and hello to the, good guys. Um, so I, I never like when people read uh, PowerPoints. So I'll let you guys read that and then we'll move oh. on to the. Oh, okay. <laughs> Heather, you're anticipating me. <laughs> It'll take a moment to get you a hang of it. Okay. So um, uh, plants are bought for the most part. And now we're just waiting for uh, the weather and town regulations to cooperate. We were going to um, do the planting this coming week, but we were running into the water ban and we really need to water. It's a hundred or more plants and we need to water them in and keep them wet for a week or two, otherwise we'll lose them. So there was a change in the regulation this morning. Uh, so now we're back to odd even days of watering, no weekends, but uh, during the week. So we will, uh, we're gonna schedule um, the planting for about two weeks from now when we can get three odd days in the week and make sure we can water everything. Okay, Heather, you can move on to the next one. So um, that's a picture in the winter, of course, but that's, I call that burning bush lane because uh, to the right beyond uh, out of the camera is where our equipment trailer is. So we generally walk down this lane in between the, uh, gauntlet of burning bush and <laughs> now this time of year they're green in another well they're gone now but in another week or two they would be bright red which is why they were planted there because they're they're very beautiful in the fall um trouble with this plant is that really does uh, uh spread in the woods and it's still for sale in rhode island nurseries though it is banned in massachusetts and connecticut but rhode island has no bans on any invasive shrubs so one of the things Master Gardening is working on uh, to try to get the Nursery Association in Rhode Island to ban some of these invasives. Um, so this plant, in addition to the red foliage, has tiny little berries that are candy for the birds. And so they eat them and then they go into the woods and do what they do and then there's new burning bush. So that's why it's important to get these out of here because it's not this, this plant is, wasn't as pervasive as some other invasives in the woods behind the museum, but uh, we've probably pulled out 50 or more in the couple of years that we've been working back there. Okay, Heather. So I found a couple of pictures to uh, uh, give people an idea of what you see. So in the fall, in, in the woods, you would see these plants turn bright red, and you can see how many of them there are in that picture. And then on the right, uh, you look at to the right of that bush is the car. You can see how big these things can get given the right condition. And of course, the bigger it is, the more flowers and the more berries and the more babies it's going to make. Okay, Heather. Uh, so then the second plant that was around the museum, uh, very pretty again, because it has red foliage is a Japanese barberry. So there were, I think, uh, four of them. Well, there was a fifth one that was dead, but there were four alive around the museum. They are now gone. But this too was brought in as, a, as an ornamental by the landscape trade. And um, no one thought about at that point in time how invasive it could be in the woods, like Kenachit Farm. 
So this, and the next, if you see the next slide, all right, Heather, the next slide, you can see how this gets in the woods. It forms these dense masses of, uh, of foliage. And it, this one is hard to dig out. We end up using shovels to get, we have a, a really neat tool called a, called a um, it gets called a plant wrench. The idea uses a lever and it can pull the whole plant out by its roots. We, it works very well on privet and rose, but it doesn't work on barberry. It's a tough plant. So we have to dig these out. And they're uh, full of thorns and uh, very dense. Not a good plant. I, I saw one today. I was walking in the, in the trail today and I saw one right where the, uh, uh, the path from the field goes down into the trail. So they're, they're here and there and there. We've gotten a lot of them out, but they're still showing up. Okay, Heather? So this is really interesting. Uh, I had a nice conversation with Jim Crothers about three or four weeks ago, where this, this is a round space, uh, 82 feet in di diameter, uh, with a, some kind of old machine sitting in the middle like a sculpture and some native shrubs surrounding it, and then all the rest of its weeds. And Jim had a picture of back when the mansion burned of a big pavilion or gazebo structure that was, he thought, sitting in this space. So this is kind of a historic space. It's been a garden now for probably the last hundred years, but before that, it was a, a pleasure gazebo or pleasure pavilion. So it's kind of fun to think about the history of it as we replant it into a native plant garden. Um, okay, next. So the volunteers have already started to work. The picture on the right is from our first session on the fourth, when we started clearing all the weeds out of the circle garden and uh, started cutting back the, the big, very mature shrubs. And then the picture on the left, Heather just added a few minutes ago, that's from the session on Saturday when we were working to clear this bed. And this is the secondary bed that's against the uh, stone wall of the cemetery. Call this one the half moon garden. And it too is just full of weeds and hasn't been taken care of for, probably for decades. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing about this day when we went over there to finish this work is the uh, the machine and the uh, gentleman from Grandscapes was there, and it was fascinating watching this machine make such short work of those uh, 26 invasive shrubs. Um, the ones that were out in the open, all they had to do was grab them by their, <laughs> by their shrubbery and you lift them right out of the ground. It was remarkable. So they're all piled up in a giant dumpster to be taken away. And the dumpster, by the way, was, was also uh, free to us from there against it, rubbish removal. So I've got to make sure I thank everybody who's involved in this project. So we are ready to rock and roll when the weather cooperates. Another picture of what I call Burning Bush Lane. Um, they're all gone now. So on the left-hand side there, uh, there, the museum did not want to replace shrubs there because it was a pain for the the, ground, the grounds guys to mow around them. So that's going to be put back into grass. But on the right, where those burning bush are now removed, we're going to uh, put some blueberries uh, right along the fence, and then ultimately uh, some more shrubs and native grasses going down the lane. And then to the right is, you can't see in that picture, but to the right is the round garden and the half moon garden. So the idea is that the space from the lane to the right to the cemetery wall will be uh, a nice place to walk and contemplate and maybe take uh, wedding pictures with the weddings that take place on the um, museum grounds. All right, uh, there's a, a good picture of the Half Moon Garden before we started taking the weeds out. It's a very nice little setting and I think uh, once we fix the soil a little bit it's going to be very pretty. To, there's a lot of natives that handle shade especially in the spring and fall so uh, we're looking to make that a uh, a lot prettier than it is right now. Okay. So this slide is now out of date because we're not doing it this week, but we hope to do it October 5th through October 7th. Um, the Friends of Canachet Farm volu Trail Volunteers have already probably put in a good 
35 hours on this. Uh, they'll be doing a good deal of the work with some volunteers from the museum. Uh, we're trying to be COVID safe, so the crews will be five or six people. Uh, and the tentative plan is to plant, plant the, uh, the perennials in the round native plant garden and the half moon garden. And then the harder work, days two and three, dig planting holes and then reinstall shrubs around the, the two buildings where they were removed and the blueberries along the fence. And I threw this in. Just, oh, so this is a this is an example. This is a Kettle Pond native plant garden. This is a master gardening project. Kettle Pond is you see the sign as you're heading west on Route One. It's right off the road. It's a uh, it's fish and wildlife um, park. But about three years ago, they installed a native plant garden, and it's it's. It's a fabulous time of year to go see it because most of these natives are blooming right now. So this, these, this picture and the next one were taken a week and a half ago when I visited there to see how some of these plants look. Uh, it, it, you know, the native plants are, are maybe not as showy as some of the ones that we put in our gardens, but if you mask them by putting five or seven or nine plants together, you get a look like this. I don't know how many plants this was to begin with, but it's filled the space and it was just gorgeous. And then uh, the same group is was moving on to, there, there's a new install going on at Trustum Pond from the same people and the same plants. And from the, the, the hundred plants that are going into our native plant garden here in the museum are all from seed grown at the uh, Kettle Pond uh, native plant garden. And they, the, the good thing about that is that it's always good to plant plants that are already localized to the weather and to the climate of where you're going to plant. So instead of buying plants that may have been grown in Connecticut or New Hampshire, we're going to put plants in that were grown right here in Rhode Island a few miles down the road. So that's the presentation. That's the plan. Um, open for questions if anyone has any. Oh, oh, and that last picture, did you show the last picture? The last picture is uh, uh, a fan favorite. That's a butterfly weed. Did we get, did you lose that picture, Heather? All right. Anybody have a question, <laughs> comment? All right then. Oh, oh. oh. That, was, that was excellent, Tom. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Heather. Is Heather getting to the last picture or is it? Oh, there it is. There's the last picture. And that's the uh, same thing. There was probably, they probably started with three or four uh, butterfly weed and it was just, that's probably two and a half, three feet wide and it's deep and it was covered with bees and butterflies. Just, just gorgeous. So we hope in two years we'll have the same kind of look at South County Museum. What questions do you all have? I don't think anyone has a question. No. <laughs> well, thank you so much again for the opportunity to be the chosen site for beautification. Um, we are always interested in helping from the littlest person to us older ladies and gentlemen to enjoy something, uh, particularly during COVID. It's been really important that they have a place to go um, and that's the reason why the museum admission is free during COVID, uh, just to give the, everyone the opportunity for a, a moment away from modern times. Um, if you're interested in volunteering on the days that Tom was talking about, more information will be posted on the Facebook pages of both groups, as well as on our website. And we welcome you to send a email to South County Museum at gmail.com and we'd be happy to sign you up. I think that's it. Thank you, Heather, for uh, handling the, uh, the technical aspects of this presentation. <laughs> no problem. Thank you all for joining us and have a great night. All right, Thank good you. night. Thank you. Good night.